Imagine if we went back in time and gave an NFL team a cheat sheet for the draft, telling them exactly who the best players are in the position they are drafting for the first and second rounds, occasionally giving them a little nudge when it comes to free agency and who they shouldn't let go. What would those teams look like now if they were able to always play the draft perfectly? That's what I'm here to try and answer. Here we are, the final episode of this thing. We finish it off with last year's Super Bowl champions, the New England Patriots. And now part of me was like, just why bother doing what if the Patriots drafted perfectly? I mean, have you seen their off season? The players they've added compared to the players they've lost, it doesn't even really matter if they drafted perfectly or not because on paper right now they've pretty much got the best roster in the NFL. That's not to say it's flawless, no roster is flawless, but let's actually still do this properly. And the way I'll do this, because we know what the Patriots are like, they like to just get rid of people for whatever reasons, once they're done with them, they're out the door. But what we'll do is some of those people I will stick with, some of them I won't. Basically the same as everybody else really, but a little more liberal with the just sticking to what the Patriots have done. So plenty of people won't be on this team even if there were better picks and stuff. But let's just get into this Patriots team. And we start with a draft pick in 2011 with the 17th overall pick. The Patriots selected Nate Solder at tackle, and that was the correct pick. The left guard would be Joe Tooney, then David Andrews at center, Shaq Mason at right guard, and Marcus Cannon, a man we've thrown onto a couple of teams, would be the right tackle. That is the offensive line, and let's move on to the tight ends, and the Patriots have signed themselves a new tight end in free agency, or rather traded themselves a new tight end in free agency. Dwayne Allen, of course, is the guy there. And you cannot, of course, forget Rob Gronkowski. Moving on down to the wide receivers, and we're gonna kick it off here with a draft player, but we're not gonna put him in the team. In 2013, with the 59th overall pick, the Patriots selected Aaron Dobson. However, they could have had Keenan Allen. There's a couple of players you could have had instead, but knowing the Patriots, they probably would have traded away Keenan Allen by now. So let's build the Patriots wide receivers as they stand right now. Now I'm guessing if our number one wide receiver is our ex, we'd have Chris Hogan here, Brandon Cooks here, and Julian Edelman thriving in the slot position. Of course, you've then still got Malcolm Mitchell, Danny Amendola, a couple options. The team is deep. I don't know if that's even going to be close to the order. Maybe would be the order I would have it on primarily just because Hogan obviously a little bit more of an X than Brennan Cooks. Then James Devlin at the fullback position. And then we come on to the running backs and it's a deep stable. And because of how deep it is and how, you know, there is no number one running back, we're just going to do it in order of Madden Ultimate Team overalls. So you could have Dion Lewis. Maybe it'd be Mike Gillisley who's signing off a sheet with the Patriots and the Bills don't look set to match it, so he should be a member of the Patriots. Of course, they have the Super Bowl hero, James White. And Rex Burkhead is another option for the team. And as we're here with the running backs, in 2011 with the 56th overall pick, the Patriots selected Shane Vereen at running back. Now, I would say correct. You know, they won a Super Bowl with him, using him specifically as part of their very tailored offense, but DeMarco Murray outright a better running back, of course, a different type of running back, or they could have even taken Dion Lewis. And then we move on to the quarterbacks, and in 2014, with the 62nd overall pick, the Patriots selected Jimmy Garoppolo. Jimmy Garoppolo, the next quarterback taken after Derek Carr, was the correct pick, and they also have this fella called Tom Brady, that's the Patriots offense, and when I say that's the Patriots offense, I mean that's literally the Patriots offense. Wouldn't really be improved with a perfect draft, except, of course, let's not pretend Keenan Allen wouldn't be able to make this team and wouldn't be a huge improvement over one Aaron Dobson and as you know a number one wide receiver no offense to Chris Hogan probably an improvement there as well can't really compare him to Brandon Cooks though let's move on to the defense now and as we're with the safeties let's get all of these out the way in 2012 with the 48th overall pick the Patriots selected Tavon Wilson at safety. Better pick would have been George Iloka, maybe. Doesn't really matter. Then in 2015, with the 64th overall pick, the Patriots selected Jordan Richards. And pretty much the correct pick there. Nobody better they could have really taken instead. So our actual free safety is Devin McCarty. Patrick Chung is our strong safety. Then on to the linebackers. And again, we've got some stuff to get out of the way here. So in 2013, with the 52nd overall pick, the Patriots selected Jamie Collins and then traded him away for, you know, a compensatory pick to the Browns. That was the correct pick, but he's no longer on the team. 
Then in 2012, with the 21st overall pick, the Patriots selected Chandler Jones at defensive end, who's since moved to outside linebacker, so we're just naming him here now. That was the correct pick. Slash, not bad if you think Whitney Merciless is significantly better than him. And now for the actual linebackers. Rob Ninkovich at left outside linebacker. Shane McClellan at right outside linebacker. And they, those are basically just pure guesses. You could obviously have Cal Van Noy. Maybe a Landon Roberts goes outside. Who knows? The Patriots, just, we're running backs are light linebackers. They just play anyone anywhere when they fancy it. But the middle linebacker spot pretty much spoken for in 2012 with the 25th overall pick. The Patriots selected Dante Hightower, then gave him a fat contract to stay. That was the correct pick as well. Let's move on to the cornerbacks. So cornerbacks, let's start with the obvious one. I say the obvious one. In 2011, now it's obvious, with the 33rd overall pick, the Patriots selected Razai Dowling at cornerback and Richard Sherman would be the man there instead. But what we'll do is because it's kind of unfair to put Richard Sherman on the Patriots, we'll take that as a scratch. Our actual number one cornerback will be new free agent signing Stefan Gilmore. Malcolm Butler, at least for the next year, would be the number two guy. And now for the third one, because we scratched Richard Sherman off and it would be Eric Rowe or somebody like that, I'm going to make a dream choice here. I'm pretty sure it's going to happen anyway. I already talked about this on Twitter, but Jason McCourty in this dream scenario joins the team. The two McCourties join together, grow eight feet tall and become the greatest defensive back ever to play in the NFL. Twin powers unite. But to be honest, I think that's probably just a pretty good guess of what will end up happening anyway. And then finally, the defensive line. Trey Flowers at one defensive end position. Coney Ely at the other defensive end position. And then let's get through these defensive tackles in 2014 with the 29th overall pick. The Patriots selected Dominique Easley, and that probably was the correct pick. Maybe Timmy Jernigan would have been a better pick, but he's not on the team anyway. Then in 2015, with the 32nd overall pick, the Patriots selected Malcolm Brown, and that was the correct pick. And alongside him, recently re-signed Alan Branch, and that completes the Patriots team here. We make a little bit of a cheat with Jason McCarty, but just swap in for Eric Rowe. See, not much of a difference anyway, and that is it. The linebackers, not suspect, but obviously not a super strength for them. Of course, we know about the offense. Well, what's the question for the Patriots? I think, what, when's it got to stop? 